and show the other two opportunities. I, well, folks were in the movie of Hawaii uh, after he did a pilot for a show called um, Johnny Wildlife, which was a great show, one of the first shows in color, but it, it didn't sell. So we were going to move to Hawaii, and the um, agent said, well, let's go on a couple more interviews. So Leave it to Beaver was one, Mouse to Tears thing was another, and Tarzan was the, uh, was the, the third one. And so... Well, it was to play boy, Well, <laughs> not that, oh, a chimp, I thought I was playing the chimp. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, Mom took me to a, uh, a drive-in to have a hamburger and a mall, and uh, she started explaining, well, you know, you're really lucky, you got these three jobs that they want you for, uh, Musketeers, and I said, well, I can't, I can't sing, I can dance a little, but I can't sing. And then they said, Tarzan, and I thought, wow, that's good. I can swing some vines. That'll be fun. And I love chimps. So, um, and then the third one was Leave it to Beaver. And I said, well, I don't know. What do you think? And she said, well, I don't know either. She, uh, but I think that Leave it to Beaver might be, might be better. So I, so I said, okay, took another bite of hamburger, and uh, that was it. So, <laughs> uh, hamburger uh, directed my <laughs> life. <laughs> So anyway, uh, th then I uh, was on the Leave it to Beaver show. And then in the 80s, we came back and did uh, a movie of the week for CBS. And then uh, after that, we did a series. We did 105 episodes of the new Leave it to Beaver. It was called A Few Different Things at the time. And, uh, and then I started directing so the last uh, 17 years or so of my career was directing, producing, and writing a little bit. So it's been, it's been pretty good, and, and now I'm uh, a sculptor, actually. And talk about luck. I had a gallery in Long Beach that was, I mean, in uh, Beverly Hills that was handling my stuff. And unbeknownst to me, they sent in a couple of um, uh, photographs of my work to this, uh, this show in, uh, in France. And somehow I got accepted, and uh, it was in the Louvre. It was just amazing. It was so we went over. And we had so we went over, and we had a had a great time. Now you want to pick your piece of work? In my life. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about myself, but I could give people some insight into who you are. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, as my musician said before, that um, I was working for an advertising agency in Kansas City, and I was producing TV commercials, and somebody came up to me and said, you need to find a, an all-American guy, this was in 1977, for a McDonald's spot. And somebody else in the office said, I heard Tony Dow's coming to town to do a play. So I called the theater where I knew he would have been. And um, one thing led to another. We met, and we fell in love, and we just used to say, a quarter pounder brought us together. It's been an interesting time being with, you know, what did I know about actors, really? Does anybody know about <laughs> So, it, you know, we, we've had a very interesting life, and... And it's what, still going on. Yeah, and we're about to get a puppy dog, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Next week we're getting a new puppy, you may. Um, that was a very spectacular. You did great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe we could do some question and answer so I can, you know, know what you guys are interested in. I have a microphone. I'm just going to stand next to you, that way they know where to look. I got a pretty good voice. Um, is this your first time in Knoxville, and how are you liking it so far? You know, I think it is my first time in Knoxville. I, we haven't been here. Memphis? We've been to Memphis. Nashville. Nashville, Nashville yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we've also been to Cleveland, Tennessee, but uh, not, not it's here. It's beautiful. When we flew in just a few hours ago. Can you hear her? Well, how come you can hear her and you can't hear me? <laughs> he can hear you. <laughs> it, it struck me when we were flying in and I was looking at all these hills that, of course, it's hard because. David Crocker was born on a mountain. Oh, so, what, what is the town that he's from? Oh, wait a minute. Flint, 
Hey, you like that your shows on Me TV? On Me TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just like the other older shows. <laughs> you know what? That show has been on the air for yeah. 60 years. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. You know, this this year, October 4th, will be the 60th anniversary of the first airing of Leave It to Beaver. But does anybody know what else? Something really significant happened that day. October 4th, 1957. Oh, I know. You know? <laughs> 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 okay, what happened before? Does anybody know? Anybody? I'd write off anybody. Uh, I don't know if anybody... We got, we got yeah. a guest back there. Rocket Boys? Rocket Boys? Rocket Boys. No, but that's close. <laughs> Actually, uh, Russia... Yeah? Sputnik? Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Russia put Sputnik up in uh, in orbit around Earth on that now, day. Was there a chimp? <laughs> I don't think there was a chimp. I wasn't available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so who would have thought 60 years later, it's never been off the air. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's uh, some people think it's the longest running show, continuously running show on television. Obviously, Lucy, you know, was on forever, but that had different you know, incarnations. Is that the right word? So, um, you know, she had the I Love Lucy, and then the Lucy Show, and then Lucy and Desi, and that sort of stuff. But Leave It to Beaver, we did 130, 234 episodes. So we gave a lot of reruns for uh, for them to run. And no, I haven't gotten paid for it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you uh, remember what your favorite episode was to do? Uh, well, I'm actually going to, yeah, I do, except that it's probably not the one that I really think is my favorite because I can't remember that one. <laughs> but, um, it was the one where uh, Ward wanted to take the boys up to Shadow Lake or wherever it was to go fishing like he used to do when he was a kid. and. He, Barbara was, uh, he wanted June to go, but of course she didn't have anything to wear, so she <laughs> didn't want to go. And the boys didn't want to go because their, you know, vampire monster movie was playing at the theater. So anyway, he drags us up there, and uh, we go fishing, and he's real proud of himself. We caught a bunch of fish, and the guy says, yeah, we stocked the pond uh, yesterday, which was very disappointing for him. And... Uh, Anyway, it was uh, it was a real cute the show. The boys were on the hill at night watching a drive-in movie because it was the same movie they wanted to stay home and watch. Yeah, well, we 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 Ward asked what, you know, where the boys are, and uh, June said, oh, I think they're outside. And he said, ah, probably bird watching or studying some nature kind of thing. And uh, so he went to find us, and he, he was all excited because we're finally looking at nature. And he comes up behind him and says, boy, what, what are you looking at? Down there was a drive-in with monsters and, and, and monsters. 
Please don't fly ahead. <laughs> well, I can't help that. That's the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Got a question? I love your Princess Leia. You look so Thank pretty. you. Yeah. Always watching your childhood on TV affects you in any way. And did you meet Elvis Presley? Uh, answer to the last question is no. <laughs> answer to the first question probably drove me crazy. I don't know. <laughs> um, it was a really interesting um, childhood. You know, you're working um, between uh, you know 45 and an hour a day. You have school which you have to take care of. You have to learn your lines, and so it was. It was a pretty busy time, and uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. But you know, a lot of kids, kid actors and stuff, have had some problems. So I think there's something that's a little difficult about making the transition from being a kid actor, where everybody loves you, to being a ugly big kid that nobody likes. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. How much did the show influence raising your family? Say it again. When you were raising your family, did you have a lot of uh, influence from the show, the morals and values that we all learned in your that, show? That would be a great story. I, I think I'll make that one up. <laughs> <laughs> because no, I don't think I did. Oh. I was, I, I have a son and I was, it was very hard for me because I'm not, I don't do discipline very well. So he just sort of ran all over me. He turned out to be a great kid, but um, I never, I didn't have a den to, you tell me. <laughs> no, I just want to say Christopher's a firefighter. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. He did a little bit of acting. He portrayed Wally as a kid on Leave It to Beaver. The new Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, the new Leave yeah. Oh, yeah, that shot. I don't know if anybody. But Wally was always talking about the Springfield game, which was a state championship where he made that winning shot at the last minute. So uh, they wrote a, an episode where Wally gets on a motorcycle, crashes into a car, flies over the car, and is in the hospital, and his life flashes before him. So my son was me. He did a really great job. Yeah, that really you know, was cool. And then he wanted to become an actor, and I said, huh, get an A and a B and you'll be all right. <laughs> in school, that is. Yeah. How did your parents go about uh, organizing your career as an actor with your school life as a child? Well, they, I don't think they did. Uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, it, it just sort of happened. And what you do when you're shooting a show is you go to school for three hours a day, but it's very condensed so that you really you can learn a lot or you can not it just depends upon how you you, you know you, you approach it so um so i was um i was still diving and swimming some when, when the show started so that was a little hectic because i had workouts at night and uh, that was kind of tiring but um our schedule was fairly flexible. We 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 read on Monday, and then the writers would rewrite the show. Tuesday we rehearse for a whole day, setting up the shots, and the director would figure out the blocking and whatnot. And then the last three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we would uh, shoot the show. It's a single camera show, which I'm sure you guys all know the difference between single camera and a multi camera show. So um, anyway, you know, it was it was pretty well organized. I had a pretty organized. Uh, so I, I personally, I think that um, Tony was under a lot of pressure because you know, an AAU swimmer and diver, and he also did exhibition trampoline, and you know, going to school and learning your learning your lines, and it was just. Um, I don't even know if it occurs to you that there was really a lot of pressure. And then on top of that, his dear mother would have him, you know, people would come over, family, friends, to visit, and he 
we have to perform for them. <laughs> and I'm not a performer. I have to play the piano for yeah, Pink Dew. Right? Right? You know, but she wasn't really a, uh, a stage mother, like uh, in the common definition of the word. Um, but, you know, she was proud of her little boy and wanted him to show her friends how good he could sing and dance, which was too bad because he couldn't. <laughs> His mother was, um, she was a math senate bathing duty. She was, um, she was in silent film. She was in a lot of the old, you know, the Buster Keaton uh, and, uh, this, these trips, like she would be on the galloping horse as a cowboy. A galloping horse, and then she would jump onto a moving train or a, a stagecoach or whatever, and then jump back from the train stagecoach to the horse. And does anybody know the name Clara Bow? She was Clara Bow's double. So yeah. she, um, she looked exactly like her. So I wish I'd been around to see that. But anyway, yeah, she she did uh, she did stunts for uh, for even men because men there weren't many people that could you know go from a, a galloping horse onto a train or a stage coach. So uh, sometimes when you see that happen, those old time westerns, you know, when they speed it up real fast, where they're moving around real fast and jumping, uh, that's probably her because not many people did that. But back then, they didn't even give credit to the end. By the end of the film, they wouldn't have the extras. Which actually is kind of, kind of nice. Does anybody like the credits that roll on for 10 minutes after the film? <laughs> 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 you know. Yes, I always wondered why a character like Wally would hang out with a character like Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a couple of stories. Uh, uh, Barbara had, a, had an indentation in her neck. So the first day we're shooting, the, I think it was Max Stengler, but I'm not sure which, or Bill Sickner was a cameraman. And he said, can I see the wardrobe person? And went over and he said, Barbara's got a, I can't get light in there, so can we find something to put around her neck? And so the wardrobe person went out, didn't have anything, was looking through the, the, the drawers and whatnot, and came up with a string of pearls. So that's how that happened. It became like a, a signature for her. Um, and the second question, oh, heels. Well, the boys started growing, which uh, is very bad in television. <laughs> Uh, producers figure they can run these shows for eight years and the kids will stay the same, you know, height, little, little. So we, uh, they had to keep us um, looking like kids. So they put her in higher and higher heels as uh, the seasons went on. And uh, what was the first question? Oh, yeah. Doesn't everybody have a friend yeah. like Eddie Haskell? If you're in trouble, I mean, every time. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, but the show certainly wouldn't have been as good without Eddie Haskell. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was really a great character. I think he was one of the, you know, the top characters on television you know, at that time. No, there is a book called, um, a friend of mine is writing it, or it's written actually, and it's the, um, yeah, the life story of Hollywood original bad boy or something like that. It's actually very interesting because he had an interesting life. He wasn't at all, well, he was a little bit of a kidding actor, but he wasn't really, he wasn't really uh, and, uh, you know, he had a, he and his brother had a helicopter um, uh, company for five minutes until they crashed. <laughs> and then, uh, then he, he was a policeman at, in LAPD. And, uh, and then he got shot. Uh, he got shot in the vest and the belt buckle. That saved his life. 
and he was just recovering from that, and he was pretty traumatic. And then uh, the, uh, he went out again, like he's maybe third or fourth time out, and he almost got shot again. Somebody shot back and he said he, he felt the bullet go right through his hair. So he was ready to quit. He figured he told him, what the heck? How's it gonna, it's not gonna happen three times. <laughs> 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 You can't go? <laughs> okay, um, <coughs> yeah, everybody got along really well, and that was because the producers, Joe Conley and Bob Moser, were, um, were really understood that to keep the show working well and keep the boys um, innocent as they were supposed to be, he didn't want us to even watch the shows when they came on. So uh, I remember when somebody was on the set and they used a swear word, he was immediately gone. You know, so it was like a, they really took good care of us. And um, Hugh, he was a little standoffish. Uh, you know, he, was, he, he, I think he, he did movies. He did, uh, what's the character? Anyway, he, he was a, a detective, uh, and. And he was doing like three or four of those a year, and then, uh, and then he he got the show, which he thought wasn't going to work anyway. So when it got sold the second season, third season, he wanted to get out of it. He said, "Too hard working with kids now." Yeah, he didn't like being upstaged by the children. Yeah, and I know how that is because in New Leave at the Beaver, I played the father. And I got a face playing. <laughs> I really think that um, all of the characters were like on the show. They were extensions of the real people. They really were the same people. I can say that because I I knew them all, and I'm just watching and observing. And Ken Osmond was a wise guy. I mean, he well, this was when you were kids. But tell them about. Uh, the mag the girly magazines that he brought to school. Uh, yeah, well, we were all in the same classroom at, uh, in the beginning of the show, and we were, uh, he brought in a girly magazine. He said, hey guys, look at this, look at this. And we're all, oh man, cool. And, um, and all of a sudden the door opens and the teacher comes in, and he shoves the thing right in front of me, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. And uh, the teacher came over and said, uh, tell me, what is that? And I said, I uh, don't know. It's, uh, just <laughs> it up there. And uh, anyway, she was very, she, she said, I'm very disappointed in you boys. Or you boys first, because she beat me through the whole thing. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Got a question back here? I just want to say that I grew up with your show. I really appreciate the values and the acting that you did. I think the show was fantastic, and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it, and thank you. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. For a long time, you know, after the show, I was trying to have a career as an actor, and then uh, became a director. Um, it was hard to get away from the role, so it was hard for me to really look at the show uh, objectively. But. Um, or is it subjectively? Objectively, thank you. So anyway, so I was, I, I didn't watch the show and I was a little, you know, I, I knew it was a good show but I didn't care much about it. Probably embarrassed, yeah, embarrassed by it. And, uh, but then, you know, when I'm 40 and 50 uh, last year, and, uh, <laughs> And uh, see the show. I see how uh, how well it holds up, and it really the writers were sensational. They had they had a uh, they had something to say in every show, and uh, a lot of people will tell me that they were brought up. They brought their kids up on the show, and that really helped them because we got a lot of advice every every week, Wednesday night, seven o'clock, or whatever it was.
But thank you. Anyway, that's my. Bergamasco, B E R G A M A S C O, also known as an alpine sheepdog. She is characterized by, or the breed, by dreadlocks. So there's the Puli and the Commodore, which are Hungarian breeds. They have dreadlocks. And then, so our new puppy was born April 1st, and we haven't met her yet, but we're picking her up from Evergreen, Colorado in a little over a week. And her name is going to be Poppy. And half of her face is black, and the other half is like a pale gray. <coughs> and she's so cute. <laughs> wow. So, but do check into that Bergamasco. You'll see pictures and quite, quite cool. Yeah, I, I, I was, where I come, people say, well, where'd you, where'd you find this dog? Because nobody's ever seen one before. And we got, we had a bearded collie which was part of our family, and then we lost her. And um, so I was getting withdrawal from not having a dog. And I said, we gotta get, we gotta get a dog. We, and so we went out looking, and we were looking at golden, uh, well, golden doodles, and labradoodles, and those kind of things. And do you have labradoodles here? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're very cute. And anyway, I was in Barnes and Noble and I was coming through a dog book and all of a sudden it just flipped open to this page and this dog was there and I couldn't believe it. I said, this, this is amazing, we gotta get this dog. And there was only one breeder in the country because there was only about two or three hundred of them in the country. And uh, so I did a little research, talked to her, uh, the breeder, found out that their temperament is fabulous, they're great with kids, they're great with other animals. And we had her for 13 and a half years. So, uh, but either way, I know it's politically incorrect to get a pedigree dog, but he wants his brother Masco, so we're, <laughs> we're going for it. <laughs> you don't find him inside of him. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, give it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, stop by the table, talk to them a little bit more, uh, get some pictures signed, shake some hands, kiss some babies.